Good morning, everybody. Good morning from a beautiful day here along the beach in the Philippines. Panay Island, just outside of Iloilo. Well, we're picking right up where we left off yesterday, and that's going to be continuing to move gravel. You see this is all starting to fill in down through here, starting to flatten out. And we're going to take some of this here and just kind of level all this up a little bit and um, get it where it is a drivable area. And then we're going to be putting that finer gravel down over top of it to even level it up even more. And then I don't even care if it gets sand over the top of it because uh, the sand will actually bind all that stone together even tighter. And at the same time, it's easier to walk on for everybody. It's all all right with me. I'm not trying to make it look like a road. I just need a hard surface underneath to always be able to drive on and something with a hard, solid mass to try to stop this from washing away completely again. I'm not going to say that it ain't going to still get it, but we can try our luck. So we'll see. But I'm also limited on what I can do and what I want to spend. Put a couple of those right down here at the end here too. Yeah. Add more in there. Put put the, put all the put all that right over. In there. Yeah. It's gonna be good. Man, them putting that in that sacks is so much easier, especially when it comes to unloading. Huge difference. At least there's a little bit of shade over there where they're bagging it up, but there's no shade over here and it's hot. Is it still recording? Oh, I got a new cameraman right there. And he's already asking for cut it. He wants a cut. <laughs> so all these big boulders, we're keeping these for decoration. And I got it. three big ones over here. I joke and call this big white one here. I call it the dinosaur egg. Yeah, that's just nice little decoration, you know. So yesterday, Mop Mock and I ran that endoscope camera down inside that block pipe. And we got right there to it. And sure enough, right there, man, you could just see it. Right there, coming from where the vent stack goes up to the top. And it kind of comes to a T with a, a T, like with a sweep on one side. Um Somebody, somebody dumped concrete down it. Yeah, just tell the truth. And I've got such a great crew here. And we've, not just crew, it's family, you know, and all. It would be shocking for me to try to even decipher who would do something mean like that. And then we have to think back when the house was being poured, we had temporary help over here. And, you know, we had a lot of people, so it could be, you know, many different people could be responsible but our crew back then we had two people that when they left they didn't they didn't come back and uh one of those i mentioned in a previous video was always just i want to use the curse word but i'm not going to was always messing around you know always being mischievous and a lot of times uh, out in his personal life too, out getting in trouble and all, you know. Um, and he was getting in some trouble just right before 
we finished up on some some pouring and went back to the US. Now he wasn't in trouble with me, I'm talking about in trouble like with the law here, had actually got detained and was having trouble in his relationship and I think he had some like um, aggression issues and all. Um, do you all know what a manic is? Like a manic can be a very depressed, disturbed individual, but can put out a whole lot of overreaction, acting mega super, super silly and goofy and being a clown and all that. But in fact, they're a highly depressed or disturbed individual. And there's a lot of famous comedians and stuff are like that, that on the camera and all, you know, they put out this real funny, hilarious persona, but in the reality, they're a deep, dark person. And when I see somebody that's being overly goofy and retarded sometimes, I mean above and beyond the normal call, and just a constant clown, but then you hear that they're getting in trouble and they're doing some violent things and all that, that's a sign of a person that's got a little bit of uh, mental illness going on. It's just, it's just the truth. And now this does not mean that Mel and I did anything to him because we didn't. In fact, we treat him really good and I tried to even mentor him a little bit. But somebody that's got a bad nature, um, they're hard to deal with and they're unpredictable very unpredictable and the reason why they do things just don't even make sense and if I had to bet my money I would bet that he'd be the one because I seen him one day about to drop a piece of wood down a pipe so what are you doing then he act like he was just teasing with me oh I'm, I'm just playing you know boss but uh, I don't think he was I think he was intentionally doing facetious things and once he knew it was probably going to get caught up with, um, I think he stayed away. So the good thing about this is, is that I built redundancy into this house. Now one thing that was not my only vent stack on that line, there's three vent stacks on that line. And with that line separated, uh, I still have a vent stack on it. So I got one that's clogged now. But I've got to open one over to the side of our bedroom. He's going to run that drill, so I don't want to bother him here. We still got a vent stack that comes um, in up here. Not that. That's that, that's not the vent stack. That is uh, for an exhaust fan. But this tube right here, um, just inside that column and going all the way up to the top of the house, I can show you. So... Our toilet is right there. See that little window and all our toilets right there. And there's pipe that goes in that column, drops to the septic here and the septic's out here. And in that column going up, all the way up there, you see that pipe at my finger right there? That is a vent stack way up there. So our restroom and everything, these lower restrooms and all, still all have a vent stack intact for them. So that's really good. That's the nice thing about building in redundancy. And so we were just now over on this side of the house coming back across over here. This restroom is the one the lines blocked that's coming from it going across the others. And it too, before that blockage through is up through another column, up on top, another vent stack. So I'm glad that I built in that redundancy. I really am. Now coming underneath here, I have put in, um, up here we broke into the pot, we chiseled in right there in the corner. We didn't have to tamper with our beams or nothing. And all of that to this side is where that blockage is, right over here. And this, all you see coming down is what we've already done. And that restroom's right up here and there's a couple clean outs clean out for the shower drain, clean out just out for the middle of the CR floor. And that pipe comes out right here. 
and we've already broke into it right there um, put an elbow and it's going to go down now the reason it's going down is because under the house for a backup i have put in another pipe again i'm going to stay away from this so you can do its work over there right underneath the house right there we have put in another pipe and that was a, a backup way because i thought through my years of being around building that there could always be a clog or a jam and that that one is to the far side of the house away from where all the rest of the plumbing is on this side of the house and if it was potentially ever get a clog through there that i couldn't clear or something that i would have an optional way to drain that bathroom thank god now we hadn't made it a priority because we got plenty of other restrooms here but it's time that we go ahead and address it I pretty much knew what was there anyway. I really didn't need the camera. I was just kicking a can down the street because I didn't want to deal with it. And I was mad. I was mad. Melinda was mad. And we just uh, didn't have a priority to deal with it. And we were very disappointed. But I'm going to tell you, in all of my heart of hearts, I feel that none of my, my crew right here, and I bet you all feel the same thing, had anything to do with it. None of them were shy away or nervous about it or anything like that. Like, man, we'll get caught or told on. Could one of them possibly know who did it? Maybe. Maybe. Um, but they're not tattletales, you know. Um, it can cause more problems, especially if they're dealing with an unstable person. And so uh, it is going to be just something we have to, to deal with. Um, here's the nice thing. We built this whole entire place. And it is the single only hiccup on the entire property. And there's builders watching this channel. There's people that's either professional builders or hobby builders watching this channel. I know you're out there. And you tell me a job site that does not have hiccups on it. That is just the way it is. It's just part of it. It's not a perfect world. And so this is a, a hiccup that, thank God, that I built in for redundancy on. And there's other things I built in for redundancy as well. That wasn't the only redundancy I put into this place. Because I always thought that the potential, the future add-ons are, what if you need to do this or that? What if in the future... There's new technologies come out and you need to run uh, new style cablings or something through that are different than the old style cabling. Some of them could be bigger, some of them could be smaller. You need pathways. So I created additional pathways in this place all around. And again, like I say, I'm very thankful that I did that because it only took a tiny bit of time. Uh, it only cost me just a minimal amount for some additional uh, 10 foot lengths of PVC pipe, both for drain and both for electrical conduit. A few extra elbows and all, you know, uh, a couple hundred bucks goes a long way. It's just a couple hundred dollars built in a whole bunch of backup safety and, as I keep saying, redundancy uh, into this place. So. Um, I'm having to cash in one of my redundancies here, and thank goodness it's there. Now, let's talk about that concrete. Could it be removed? Well, it's, it's about 20 foot across from an access to get over there to it. If I was to break it up and it moved, it could move over towards our master bedroom CR and if you couldn't extract that out of there and water flushed it that way it could possibly clog up our line uh going to our master cr so don't want to touch that don't want to touch that are there options for it yeah there's some high pressure jets that you can put in that professionals can now, i know in the west they're going to be around don't know if they're going to be around here uh there's real high pressure jets that can blast that concrete so hard inside that pipe that it would break it up 
once again, your risk of breaking up pieces that can move somewhere else and get lodged in a uh, in a sweep in an elbow. And ain't nobody got time for that. The next thing is there's chemicals. There's chemicals that can dissolve the lime in the concrete, causing the concrete to not be concrete no more, breaking it up. But those take time and you have to treat it again and again and again. So what happens after you break down the outside so far and now it can move once again, here's that evil that it can move towards because the slope's coming this way and the flow's coming this way and it can move towards our master. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> and then the third, similar to like when I'm talking about chemical, it's still chemical, but it's acid. Um, and acid, same thing. It'll etch and etch away at the concrete. And it's got to be a biodegradable acid. And they sell them. They sell acids and chemicals specifically made to remove concrete out of drain pipes, believe it or not. And I read this really cool article that said, that I, I'll post a link if I if I still have that article pulled up I'll post a link and read this man and uh, <laughs> that it turns out that it's way more common than what you would think I think the guy did a preface in the uh, article saying that when his editor brought him this information and all about um, cement removing cement from drain pipes he's like what you know uh, it couldn't be that common, you know, they'll be worth making an article about. But as it did the research and stuff, turns out it's mega common. Yeah, it's just, it's a crazy world, it's the way it is. All right, so that's the story on it. Now you all know, and we are uh, making a hole through my little slab right over here to drop in this additional pipe and connect to the backup pipe that I put underneath. Uh, show you another little thing that I was always kind of thinking ahead just in case just in case so here's the front of the house and here's our staircase going up and I had things I had never finished over here like you see that blue pipes those are backups for water lines if I ever had to have it or if I didn't need it for a water line and want to push electrical through if I ever had to have it and those go all the way around and go through that beam underneath our gates and they come out around over there and they're capped on the other end down in the ground. And then the other is um, got wiring for CCTV in it right there and some extra rolled up laying there right now. And underneath here also is where my other redundant pipes are, like the one that Joel's working his way down to right now. We dug under here to it and he's making a hole to access it right there and put a fitting on so we can connect it up. But then we never poured concrete in this area right here. You see, we have steel ready, and this is the edge of a beam, and that's a beam, and we've got steel bent down over here and all around there for it. But until everything was finished, functioning, working, um, all done, I was not going to fill this hole in and then cap it with concrete. And so I'm glad I didn't because here we are. So it's always good to have patience and, and also to think ahead. You know, I might have a better chuck for that or that key for that chuck, that, that key. Bring that drill in here to my toolbox and let's look. I got a bunch of those keys and we might have one in better shape because that one's pretty wore out, man. Unplug this drill. Let's bring it in there and look at it. Yeah, I had several replacement keys. This one here is just worn out, man. These guys have done so much work with that drill. And I always keep extras off other drills. This is another backup too. Uh, if you have a drill to break or anything, man, we hold on to these. Melinda's mom. 
She's over here in her pajamas. She come check on Melinda. And she just started sweeping our decks out there, which I think is so nice because it shows that she wants to do something for her daughter. It's very nice of her. Yeah, she's been moving everything, sweeping away. And, you know, if that's what she wants to do, I'm not going to go bother her and tell her, oh, mom, don't do that, you know. It's just her little personal way of showing Melinda she cares, and I'm not going to tamper with that. That's pretty cool. It's really cool because when Melinda was younger, and actually until just in the past few years, her and her mom had a pretty tumultuous relationship and may have just come so far along. I think her mom was just really hard on all the kids because she wanted them to do something with themselves. And all of her daughters, um, except one, one's there helping her in the house, so there's nothing wrong with that either, um, have got out and been able to do something in the world. Now, the thing is, is that, you know, they came from poverty and, and they tr they tried putting who they could through education. Her late sister Maribel and all uh, worked abroad and tried to help them with educations. But the girls, you know, mostly, I mean, they benefited from, from marrying foreigners. It's just the God's honest truth. So, uh, nonetheless, it's really lifted up their life. There's the, the twins, the beautiful, beautiful twins. Also, helping Mama Melinda. <laughs> yeah, I love them girls. Love this family. <laughs> Whose dress is that? Yours, right? Yeah. You're going to try to put it on her? Give it to her? Uh, yeah, it's really rocking with the, with the jersey. <laughs> You're hanging outside this evening, huh? Chilling. Chilling in the heat. It's cloudy right now, though. Look at that. Nice clouds. I wish some rain would come. It'd be such a blessing. It's so hot and dry right now. Super hot and dry. Got some bones and leftover stuff here. I'm going to take it down. Just let stray animals get it. No matter what, man, they get to eat, too. We're always giving our stuff to couple stray cats and some dogs but if she leaves it up there it draws them up all to the back of the house 